Mac Mini unboxing. Here. So here's the Mac Mini box. This just slides off like the iPod packaging. Take this out, and there's the Mac Mini. Really snugly fit in there. Really, really small. Wow, that's my wallet. <laughs> the ports in the back. Five USB Mini Display Port, Mini DVI out, FireWire 800. Hey guys, here's a brief review of the Apple Mac Mini, late 2009. It was released along with the iMac in October, and this machine has a 2.53 gigahertz Core 2 Duo processor and four gigabytes of uh, DDR3 RAM. So I'm going to be putting it through its paces a little bit. A uh, couple of quick observations: uh, the design is is beautiful. When you actually see it in person on your desk, I think uh, it, it really clears up a lot of space on the desk. As you can see, there's just a lot of empty space on my desk that wasn't there before. Um, the machine is is completely silent. I mean, you can barely hear anything. Any noise you hear is is from background noise outside or in my other hard drives. But it's it's very silent compared to my old laptop. As you can see on the back, um, there's a lot of USB ports in it and everything. But you know, the back kind of looks a little messy with all the wires. So I would suggest trying to keep it up against a wall or in a shelf so that you don't have to see all the wires. Um, So real quick, why did I get the Mac Mini and wh why do I think it's worth even looking at? When I first heard about Mac Mini some years back, I, th I thought it was just very underpowered. The one that I got, which is um, the 2.53 gigahertz with 4 gigs of RAM, is the same exact guts as the MacBook Pro mid-range, which is $1499, and this is uh, $799. So really, for almost half the price, you're getting um, the same computer, pretty much. And uh, granted, you should have a display, mouse, and keyboard, uh, which I did. And the other kind of argument is just a trend towards a lot more power in the mobile space. Because right now I find that when I'm on tour, I'm taking my cell phone with me and not my laptop. Just because it's, it's much, much lighter and it can do almost everything I would do with my laptop on the road. So this is really going to depend on what you do if you're a road warrior constantly doing serious video editing on the road, you're going to need a MacBook Pro. But if you're like me doing mostly music recording at home and in studios and touring or, or whatever it is, you probably won't need it. Uh, it's really tempting to look at the Core i5 or Core i7 iMacs and, and want to drop $2,000 on that machine, but I think a lot of people will just not need that kind of power. I steered clear of the iMac, at least temporarily, because I heard there's a ton of problems right now with um, with the quality, the screens are not working, uh, with, you get a yellow tinge and things like that. So um, Apple apparently hasn't really squared those issues away yet. So if you buy one right now, it's kind of a, you're rolling the dice on the quality. Mac mini is uh, so small, so you can use it as a home theater PC and hook it up to your TV, which is which I plan to do in addition to using it as a desktop computer. Uh, it's also very efficient. This is uh, running Snow Leopard with 2.53 gigahertz Core 2 Duo, 4 gigs of RAM. And the hard drive is a 320 gigabyte, 5400 RPM. And it's got 3 gigabits per second. It's not uh, necessarily the fastest. I've heard it's, it's uh, actually pretty bad. But um, as you'll see, it's, it's not too bad. Um, I was pretty impressed. Photoshop, Dreamweaver, everything opens really quick uh, great great responsiveness and uh, my iTunes library is on an external USB drive so it's a little bit slower but overall um, I'm pretty impressed with the Mac mini and um, this would be perfectly fine um, for like a free a freelance web developer or a, a programmer I think it's it's got um, plenty of power for what you want to do um, here we are in iMovie 09. Just a quick overview just to show you. Um, it's actually quite smooth. Uh, and it's even a tad bit smoother than this because I'm recording the screen right now. But as you can see, um, this is all HD taken with the Kodak CI8 720p HD video. And scrubbing through this stuff, uh, playing it is, is really no problem.
it's it's perfectly responsive and uh you know if i grab a clip and drag it to the timeline it's it's pretty much instantaneous even though this is hd so uh i think it's it's pretty good for an entry level kind of a machine that it is um in terms of importing and exporting files um you really have to time it with a watch rather than watch the estimated time because it ends up going a little bit faster than what they say. So far in my experience, it's been um, pretty great. So uh, definitely worth it for iMovie users. Here's a quick uh, overview of iPhoto. Launches very quickly and my library is on an external drive, so it's still... Um, goes super fast and on my old core duo macbook from 2006 scrolling up and down through this library was extremely sluggish and yeah it was it was very slow so um you can see it's it's just very smooth no problems so highly recommend it for stuff like iphoto so more info on the performance of the new mac mini late 2009 i ran an xbench and Geekbench, which are apparently two of the Mac uh, benchmarking softwares available to the general public. Uh, so this is a Geekbench score of 3582. Um, pretty good. And over here, Xbench has 135.17, and this takes into account um, the disk. One thing I want to call to your attention is the... Let's see, where is this? The graphics. Quartz graphics test much higher score than my previous computer, almost double the score, thanks to the NVIDIA 9400M integrated graphics, which takes, I think, 256 megabytes, up to 256 megabytes from the the total RAM of four gigabytes. But here's something that was kind of alarming. I don't know if there's something wrong with it, but the OpenGL graphics test appears to me to be really low, the numbers, um, 87.89, which is 111 frames per second which sounds okay but i ran the same test on my core duo 2006 laptop which is only two gigahertz with only two gigs of ram and no real graphics to speak of just intel integrated graphics and that got a much higher score it was something like you know 300 frames per second so i'm not sure if there's an issue with the chip or anything but um in real world use i don't know <clears throat> if that's going to really affect anything or not um, in terms of gaming, you can check out some of the other videos on YouTube which show that games act a lot of games actually run pretty well on this. Um, I might have to try maybe running Google Earth, which I think uses OpenGL, and see if that is a way to do it, but we'll see. Um, again, real-world testing of uh, you know using productive programs like Dreamweaver, Photoshop, you know, GarageBand, uh, I don't really see an issue there. So final verdict, very happy with the machine. I would, I think I would recommend it to anyone. I think it really depends on what you're doing. Again, each person's situation is different. You know your profession, you know what you need out of a computer. But I think the majority of people, even if you're working in, in graphic design or doing some freelance web design or home recording, um, word processing, any of that kind of stuff, you can actually get a lot of that done with no issues. And in fact, it's, it's, plenty fast to give you a smooth experience. I think a lot of the reviews that came out around the Mac Mini just assumed it was unpowered, underpowered. I think I saw the CNET review, which they basically just said it's it's very underpowered for the money. But I think if you actually use it, and it's, it's a lot uh, more power than uh, what some of the reviews will have you believe. So uh, again, very good value uh, for your money compared to even some of the other Macs. So depending on your situation, just look at all of the options you have available. And I think this is an option that I never considered before, but turned out to be my best option. Thanks for watching the review, and I hope it was helpful. I'll see you next time.